So uh, briefly, our patient is a 39-year-old female, um, history of heavy menstrual bleeding that is associated with fibroids. Um, she also repa uh, reports pain and bulk symptoms, um, uh, increased urinary frequency and bloating. Uh, the patient is status post-abdominal uh, myomectomy in 2005, which was complicated by a small bowel obstruction requiring lysis of adhesions in 2012. Um, patient is uh, currently on Lupron and reports improved uh, control of bleeding symptoms but desires a long-term solution and patient did not want uh, to undergo the myomectomy or possible hysterectomy route. Next slide, please. So this is an MRI that was performed in uh, April 2016, last month, which showed enlarging fibroids compared to the prior uh, study, uh, the largest of which you see here measures uh, about 17 centimeters. Um, you can see the, the fibroid, uh, you know, pretty much uh, replacing the entire uterus, and there's other smaller fibroids that are associated uh, more peripherally. The options for this patient included continued medical management, a myomectomy or hysterectomy, or a UAE. Um, so the referring OBGYN actually in this case felt that there was a low likelihood that the myomectomy uh, could be performed without converting to a hysterectomy um, as evidenced by the uh, you know, very large fibroid we see on the MRI. And the patient uh, did not want to go the hysterectomy route, so the patient opted for a uterine artery embolization, which she is here for today. All right, uh, thanks, <coughs> thanks uh, Dr. Vark, for that presentation. So I'm going to start just today with showing you how we do the, the access. Hopefully this will show pretty well. So again, just to show you our setup here, if you can see this, basically we do it with the left arm to the side. And I know uh, Marcello and I believe Darren as well do it more so with the left arm out. Uh, again, sort of uh, living in New York City, the rooms aren't exactly large enough to have the, the left arm out. It's easier for us, I think, <laughs> also just to, in terms of operation, in terms of room setup as well. Um, so basically, as uh, Dawn, our nurse, described earlier, the patient came into the room with emla cream and uh, nitro paste on the left wrist. Um, we, you know, we palpate the left radial artery prior, and then uh, they come into the room. They get their pre-medication again, which I think you guys talked about this morning. Um, so we do, did a quick ultrasound, and we did a uh, Barbeau test. Um, all, all we do is basically put the pulse ox on the thumb, and then um, occlude the radial artery and look at the waveform. So today, but as, as she was a Barbeau B. B. Yeah, so she was a Barbeau B. So then we, once we do the Barbeau test, then we go ahead and prep the, the patient, take the nitro paste off, and, and then prep the arm. So uh, I did an ultrasound here. It's a, it's a nice, plump radial artery. I think that nitro paste really does help, especially in these younger uh, female patients. And we're going to go ahead and get access here, OK? Wait, so again, puncture. we don't want to puncture too close to the wrist. We puncture a good uh, about inch or two, uh, at least, from the wrist to make sure. Take a nice, gentle slope. I'm going to give a little lidocaine here. So again, you can see there, we're going to puncture. We get nice uh, pulsating blood back. Push the wire up. So it's a very it's shallow nice puncture into the artery. Yeah, and I know there's different techniques and, and ways people do that. Um, so again, can I get a 4x4, please? So um, we're going to use the, uh, the Merit uh, four French sheath, uh, radial sheath here. Um, which uh, is, is pretty nice. And again, I hold a little bit of pressure um, at the puncture site just to decrease our rates of little hematomas here. Another tip is to activate the, the sheath, uh, activate the yeah, glide. Yeah, sorry, we wetted, I didn't show that part. We wet, wetted the sheath uh, beforehand. So the sheath's in, the, I take the, the dilator and the wire out. This is our cocktail, which is pre-mixed. Um, and again, it's, uh, we use 3,000 of heparin, 2.5 of verapamil, and 200 mics of nitro. And basically what I'm going to do here, I'm going to try to show this. We're going to hemodilute it, run. basically I fill up the, the syringe. Huh? That total volume ends up being be a little procedure. bit more than about 4.5 yeah, cc's. Okay. No. So again, yeah. hemodilute, and I'm going to slowly inject uh, into her hand. This may feel warm inside your, your hand, okay? So I just let them warm them a little bit. We're injecting slowly here. Um, more sedation coming to you, okay? All right. So the, the catheter we are, are going to use for our uterine fibroid embolization today is a 4 French 125 uh, angled glide cath from uh, Terumo. So I preload it with a Benson wire. And uh, go ahead here. Gonna... Uh, so you can kind of see the uterine artery here. So we're going to see if we can just sort of puff this in. How much length do you have left on your catheter roll? Um, I got about 10 centimeters here. That we, we sort of used the microcatheter as like a triaxial system to get the diagnostic catheter, and there was a little bit of a twist right at the origin of the uterine artery. Um, basically, right now, the catheter is buried. If you guys want to look at the wrist right here, 
this is sort of where we are. Um, we got a good amount of the um, glide path into the uterine artery. If I can, I like to actually do my embolization through the diagnostic catheter. I find it goes a lot faster. Um, the one good thing about this uh, catheter, it is 038, so you can place a uh, high-flow microcatheter through it. Oh, tend to take a, uh, a 150 uh, microcatheter here. Um, but yeah, that's sort of what we used. Um, we don't, we t also, the other point is we don't do a lot of runs for these. Um, in the beginning, we tend to do most of our, of our runs for the end. Um, again, just sort of saves on fluoro dose. It doesn't really add a whole lot. Um, so we've sort of moved away from doing a lot of, uh, a lot of digital subtraction and geography for, for our UPK. So the key part here is, though, to make sure that we don't see any collateral ves vessels coming off of the um, horizontal segment of the uterine, which we did not see. And there's no other collateral supply here. So um, we have a uh, three-way stopcock setup. We use, this is the, um, the Merit Embospheres, five to 700. Um, we've uh, gotten uh, rid of the effluent, uh, the, the, the mixture in here. And what we have now are, are about five to seven cc's of contrast and five cc's of lidocaine. Um, nitro. When we I did do. our run yeah. higher up, we saw we had yeah. a pretty clean uterine this artery throughout you know in, in regards to uh, no collateral vessels coming off. So I have a three cc medallion here that I'm using to mix with the, con with the uh, larger syringe to mix the combination of the particles and the uh, lidocaine and contrast. So let me ask you guys, what's usually your end point regarding uh, UAE? This is just saline flush. Two? Two. So Sounds good. As you can see, this is our last little puff here. Um, and you know, we have pretty good slowdown overall as to, to what's going on on the left side. Okay, so actually we'll show you, they need a little bit more time next door. So what we're gonna show you is just basically how we cannulate the contralateral side, which typically is the right, but there is Technically speaking, there is no contralateral side. So here, we're just gonna use the, the Benson wire to flip it over the bifurcation and then get back down. So are you using a Benson wire here, Rahul? Yep, yeah, this is just a Benson wire. Probably up higher, right? All right, so it looks like we're on the right side here now. Um, actually, let's go a couple, I'm getting some, um, Resistance. Oh, so we think you're getting some. Yeah, let's go higher a little bit. Yeah, so we're not getting a one to one movement here, so we're just checking to see. Oh, no, okay, we're good, we're good. Emergency more wire. From there. So, just to give you an idea, our total fluoro time was about 15 minutes uh, to do both sides. We got uh, about two vials in on the right, or sorry, one and a half vials on the left side, uh, about two vials in on the right side. Um, so, we're going to go ahead and show you how we uh, take everything out now, and sort of our technique. Um, I know Darren and Marcello have a slightly different technique, but it's basically just iterations of the same. So uh, Jazz is going to show how we t uh, put the uh, TR band on. All right, so uh, this is a TR band from a uh, thermo. So what we typically do is take the sheath out maybe a couple centimeters, and then there's this uh, green marker which indicates the area of maximal pressure on the TR band, and that needs to be not where you go into the skin, but where, you're, uh, you know, where you, the arteriotomy is. So usually, depending on your puncture, it's about a centimeter or two. So, uh, you know, we'll place it over that area, and then we'll take the wrist up, make this nice and secure, and uh, then we take our syringe, and what we do is we put 15 cc's in here, and then uh, once this is all lined up, go ahead and uh, give the 15 cc's of us uh, here, and then basically we take out the sheet. And then uh, very carefully we look at um, the area through the window where we, uh, you know, see the blood bleed back, and Basically, we take uh, one cc out at a time until we're going to see the, the bleed back. And then uh, once we see that, we give another cc or two. So I'm slowly going to take the air out. So how many cc's of air? So we have a total of 13. All right, so the other thing we've been doing is, you know, we feel to make sure there's a, a radial pulse still, but you'll still get it because, you know, obviously the arch is complete, so uh, that shouldn't be a problem. So the other thing I do here is I occlude the ulnar artery. Um, and make sure I still have a waveform. So here I still have a waveform. I don't know if you can hear it. You can still hear it beeping away. So I know that the radial artery is still patent underneath. Hey, so for these, we've been, you know, initially we were doing about an hour, uh, hour and a half. We've moved it back down to about an hour. Um, so actually, I think the nurses start taking it off around uh, 45 minutes to 50 minutes. Um, and then they start letting a couple cc's of air at a time. Um, I think Don, if Dawn's still there, she can sort of describe exactly how the nurses do uh, take out the... Uh, the sheath, but, or take off the band, but uh, that's done in recovery and our nurses do a great job about that, 13.